Today we'll be going over how we created this dark cinematic look for the boxing commercial we shot a few months ago. This clip was shot on the Sony A7 III with Picture Profile 7 shooting on S-Log2 with S-Gamut. This was before we learned about using the color space ITU709 matrix instead of S-Gamut, as S-Gamut with the Sony A7 III produces really strong magenta tones which are hard to get rid of. So we'll show that in this clip today. So we're in DaVinci Resolve 18 and what we're going to do straight away is just go to the color tab. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our node tree. What we're going to do is pressing Alt S is create a new node. So Alt S, Alt S, Alt S. And then we're going to press Alt L to create a layer node. And we're going to press it one more time. And then we're going to click on the layer mixer, press Alt S again to create a new node. And we're going to create two more, one, two. I'm just going to drag this node over here. So if you are just beginning your journey with DaVinci Resolve and color grading, this node tree right here might look a little bit scary. However, we'll be going through things as clearly and as concisely as possible. So hopefully it's easy to follow. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to go and label the nodes. So if I press F2, we'll be able to label the node. So this one, it'll be the white balance. We're just going to write WB. This one, if you press F2 again, we're going to write balance. The next one, if you press F2, this will be saturation. This node at the bottom, and this is going to be called skin. The one in the middle, we'll call blacks. And the top node, we're going to call background. This node, we're going to write look. This node will glow. And the last node, we're going to press F2 again and write, so it's quite sharp. So nodes naturally follow a very linear system. So anything that you grade on the node beforehand, that effect will take place on the next node. With today's tutorial, you'll be able to do this with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to leave white balance as this clip is short in log. It's hard to see the colors at the moment. So what we're going to do, do the balance and the saturation first, and then we'll go back to the white balance. So what we'll do with the balance first is go to contrast. I'm just going to bump the contrast up to a level we think works best for us. I think that's that's good. All we're going to do is you have pivot here. This is the point where the contrast hits. If you want the contrast to hit the shadows, the midtones and the highlights, what you'll do is you'll increase the pivot. So as you can see, the contrast affects more of the image. However, if you only want the contrast to affect, say, the lower midtones and the shadows, what you can do and something that we do prefer is lower the pivot and only hit the shadowy areas but of course when you do this the highlights usually do tend to get blown out a little so what we're going to do is increase the pivot a bit about here which is good and then what we're going to do next is we're going to bring the image up so if you look at the parade on the left hand side we're going to try and raise this image and just try and stretch it out as much as possible get the gamma lift the gamma and then we're going to drop the lift all lift means is shadows gamma is midtones gain is highlights essentially. What I'm going to do is increase the gain and stretch that towards this top line here. We don't want it to go over the line because that means the clip will be clipping. So I'm going to drop that back down, actually drop the gamma, drop the lift and just try and stretch the image out as much as possible. So what we're actually trying to do at the moment is we're trying to stretch the image out as much as possible, get as much color into the image as we can. So when we get to the masking stage, which is this area here, we're able to select the areas we want comfortably without selecting unwanted areas. I think that's good for the balance so far. So then what we're gonna do for the saturation, we're gonna click on saturation. What you might think with saturation, oh, I just bumped the saturation up here. But the problem with bumping the saturation up here, especially with 8-bit footage and footage from cameras like the Sony A7 III, the footage does tend to break up quite easily. So instead of increasing the saturation this way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this icon right here and then we're just going to select this we're going to increase the red output all the way up to max so it'll be two same with the green output we're going to push the green all the way to the top and then same with the blue output we're going to push it all the way to the top so you might not be able to tell the difference but from experience i found the image doesn't break up as much by increasing the saturation this way compared to when increasing the saturation just using the saturation slider. So now we've stretched the image as much as we can. As you can see, it is getting a little bit noisy, 
but we're not going to be using any denoise in this and we'll be showing you how to kind of tackle this. First things first is we're going to go and click on the skin node. So with the layer mixer, this is a great way to do masking and color separation. And you may think that the bottom layer is the layer that's at the bottom, but actually the node that's at the bottom is actually on top. So this will be on top, then this, and then this. So if we click skin, all we're going to do is click the qualifier. We're going to make sure this icon is selected. All we're going to do is click the skin and then you can press shift H or you can press the magic wand. So I'm just going to press shift H and it's going to show you the area that you've selected. And as you can see, it's only selected some parts of the skin and not others. You're able to adjust the qualifier to your liking. So we want to select as much of the skin as we can. So we go down to this area right here. Then what we can do is increase the luminance that'll, that'll affect the highlighted areas. We can increase the hue area. Of course, more of the background will be affected. So we don't want to stretch that out too much. And remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. So a lot of people, when they do do masking, they think that the area that I really want to be selected, all of that has to be selected perfectly. But I found this really doesn't have to be the case. As long as you've got it in the ballpark, it's completely fine. Drop that down. Find a nice area, increase saturation here. So saturation is the part of the image that's more saturated. If I'm decreasing this slider, it means I'm selecting the areas that have lower saturation. And of course, if I'm increasing this, I'm selecting areas that have greater saturation. So what I'm going to do is increase the softness of this. And I'm going to increase the softness of the low. I'm going to push to center, increase the width a bit. So, all right, and then what we're going to do now is we're just going to go to the blur radius, which is here. And we're just going to increase that and feel free to bump this up as much as you want. We'll bump it up to, so as you can see, as I'm increasing the blur radius, our selection basically gets feathered and it gets blurred. So when you do play back, when you do actually do your color changes, it doesn't look really noisy. If you go to number two on this menu, you can actually denoise the mask. Uh, of course, you can do this in DaVinci Resolve free version. This is an actual denoising, it's denoising, it's denoising your qualifier. So if I denoise this, you'll be able to see it denoises a bit. Um, that's all right. So what we're going to do first is all we're going to do is go to saturation here. So now we've only selected, this means we've only selected the skin. And of course, some of the, the background is highlighted as well, but that doesn't matter too much. You can always keep playing around with it, but it doesn't matter too much. And then what we're going to do is just reduce saturation to a point here. Just come to the gamma and then push that towards the red a bit. Just get a nice, clean, even skin tone like that, which is good. You can see this area is also being selected, but we can fix that afterwards. We've pushed this towards red, and after we've actually created the final look, come back to the skin tones and adjust them to our preference. As you go to the next layer in the layer mixer, which is blacks, we're gonna to go to the qualifier here. We're gonna select the picker, and we're just gonna select the darkest areas of the frame, which is within his beard. So we're just gonna select this. If you press Shift H, you will see what's being selected. So as you can see, most of the darker areas have been selected. What we're going to first do is increase the blur radius, just to smoothen that out a bit, increase the denoise, reduce the luminance, just the darkest areas of the image are being affected. If you just watch the clip, it is quite noisy. So what you can do to select the blacks a lot more cleanly is you can go here to the clean white and increase this. And as you can see, the blacks do get selected. Let's come here to saturation. Let's press shift H again to come out of this and then we're just going to, go to saturation and just drop that down if you do before and after you're just getting more of those blacks coming back instead of it being instead of it being a different color we have now the black selected and skin selected go to the background which is the final layer to reduce the saturation so as you can see if i do it before and after you can see everything that's not the skin or the blacks is now being desaturated and then what I'm going to do is go to the gamma and shift it towards the blue. Right now, we're just adding a little bit of blue. When we do the final look, we'll shift the blues more strongly. Uh, for here, we're just trying to create a separation within the three colors, which is the blacks, the blues, and the oranges of the skin. So what we're going to do is go to the skin, 
the top layer and we're going to go to windows so we're just going to come and select this area here and then we're going to come down and select the circle tool whatever area the circle covers that's the area that's going to be affected so if we move this circle towards the skin and we drag these points here the white point and we drag this down what we can do is just select his face as you can see there's white points and red points the red points is just feathering so we can select the red and feather this just so we get a nice gradual change come over to the track tool which is right here is making sure this tracker icon is selected press either forward or if you're in the middle of a clip you can select back and forth and it'll go back and forth and track the whole thing so if we just track forward as you can see the mask is now tracked with the face and it's done a pretty good job if we look without the mask as you can see this area was originally selected with the skin however we solved the problem by creating this mask and now you can see that area of the ceiling is now affected by this background layer so if i move this back and forth and now you've got a nice clean even hue of blue across the ceiling and the skin is now separated mostly from the from the background so what we can do now is go into our luck adjustment first and foremost we want to create a darker look so all we're going to do is by using the curves we're going to create three points we're going to reduce the shadows a bit reduce the highlights a bit is drop the gain not too much because if you drop the gain too much it looks quite unnatural you still want a little bit of that contrast so what we're going to do is drop that gain to about here to come back to the gamma and we're going to shift this again towards the blue now as you can see now there's quite a strong vibrancy of blue within the background so remember when we mentioned before about the skin that we'll come back to the skin after we've done the look adjustment is come back to the skin shift this towards a color that we prefer so what i'm going to do is actually reduce the saturation shift the gamma more towards the yellow and bring that down a bit it's looking good and then what I'm actually going to do is create another node and we're going to drop this curve down and we're just going to reduce the saturation. So saturation is here. So as you can see, we've essentially created the look. Now you can go further and you can shift the blues towards whichever color you like. Say you wanted the blues to be a bit more greenish, more turquoise, you can do that. And then if the skin tones were not matching, you can go to the skin tones, increase this, shift this towards the orange and have a more orange and teal kind of look. Obviously this looks kind of red. So what you can do is shift the hue towards the orange a bit, reduce the saturation and you've got a nice orangey kind of tealy look. Um, obviously this is quite rough. If we just go back, you can see we've now got this nice little separation from the skin from the background say if we didn't do the skin masking in this layer mixer as you can see the skin would look really blue and it'd be really hard to adjust this by creating the layer mixer and having these three nodes to separate the three different parts which is the skin the blacks and the background we're able to now separate the skin and adjust the skin color adjust the skin saturation hue at any point whenever we make changes further on in the node tree to me that was looking quite good and looking quite close to the original look that we created for the boxing commercial the reason we selected the blacks here is so is because if i deselect the blacks now you can see the blacks are a bit more blue but if i select the blacks now they are actually black and if they weren't black and say they were shifted towards another color you could come towards the lift and you could shift that color towards wherever you think creates a natural black color or a color that you're trying to achieve within the blacks. We try and like to get our blacks to be as black of a color as possible. Looking a little bit blue, so we can shift that towards the yellows a bit, and that's looking all right. One more thing that you can do with the skin is you see these highlights in the skin. They do almost fit into the realm of specular highlights. We can go here to HDR, this button here. It'll take us towards the lights. And we can go to the highlight, click on exposure, and drag the slider up. And you'll be able to see if I move this all the way up, just those almost 
specular highlights in the frame. Of course, this wouldn't really be classified as specular, but though the highlights on the skin are being increased and this kind of creates a bit of pop within the image. So if I zoom out, so as you can see here, the image is quite flat and that might be what you're going for. However, if you wanted the image to have a bit more of a little pop, what you can do is come to the highlight, go to the exposure and increase this. Obviously this is too much, but this is just to show you guys what it actually does and reduce it and just find a point that works best for you. So to about here. So that's good with me. Then I might even come back to this node and drop the curve even more. When you're dropping this curve, you're basically crushing the image and you're dropping the whites um, and you're bringing all the levels just down, just further down. So depending on how dark of a look you want it to go, you can go, you can even go here-ish, get a really dark look but we're just going to keep it about here. The last thing before we go into sharpening is glow. So what we can do is come to effects. You can either do add a glow, which is just here. And you see a little glow that appears where the lights are. And if you go across, you get this nice little glow that appears. You can even go to the HV ratio, which is here. And you can actually shift this towards the right and it'll create almost like an anamorphic flare. So as you can see, something like that. This was just shot on standard spherical lenses, but as you can see, it does help almost boost the production value of the image. And if you wanted to go even further, what you could do, this isn't what we did in the original clip, but you can choose a color, shift that towards a blue because a lot of anamorphic flares, of course, as you know, are blue. So you can shift them towards a blue color of your liking, press okay, and as you can see, it's got a nice blue tint to it. And if you wanted it to be stronger, you can come to the saturation and shift that towards max. Or if you didn't like it as much, you can drop it down. So we can keep it like here-ish and have that. Personally, I prefer it just white. Um, but of course, you can try different colors. Anamorphic flares are often also orangey. So you can come here and select an orange tone. Um, and this really, this does complement the, this does complement the skin a bit, uh, as well as the blues. So you can come back to here. If you wanted the glow to affect more of the image, you can shift it towards the left. Of course, we don't really want to do that. And to emphasize the glow, you can increase the gain. Gamma. So something like this. This is quite experimental. Of course, this, in my opinion, doesn't really work too well. Um, so all we're going to do is go back, create a little glow and you can have it like this. Alternative, remove the glow, come over to light rays, reduce the source threshold. And now you've got this little light ray coming through the sunroof um, and you can increase the lighting, soften it up if you like, increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, add some color to it. And then you've got this of course, if you want to spend more time on it, do it properly, you can. Um, but this is another thing. If you didn't want to do the glow, you can add a light ray. Alternatively, if you did want to go even more crazy, what you can do is get rid of the light rays, create a lens flare, MIR, move this towards the light, create a more anamorphic type look, position it where the light will be, to come over to light source masking and then adjust these parameters to a point where the flare will only appear at the brightest regions. So if I move back, as you can see, the flare will appear here. Maybe you'd increase this and then you come over. If it's too bright for you, you can reduce the brightness here and then you can go and just play around with this. I'm not going to spend any more time on this because this tutorial is already <laughs> going on longer than I hoped it would. You got this little light throw that now appears. Obviously it looks a bit amateur now, However, if you go back to our original edit, you can go back to something like this and just have a little light flow. So obviously in this edit, what we did was shifted the skin tones a bit more towards the orange. And in this new one, we kept the skin tones more close to the reds. For now, I'm just going to get rid of the glow. over to sharpening of course as we always do go over to this icon here and then go to the radius and just drag this you can select any of these drag them down to about 0.47 and it sharpens it quite nicely
this is the final look that we've created. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something that's going to help you with your workflow in the future. This can be done with any Sony footage, any 8-bit footage, any footage whatsoever. I use the same method to grade B-Raw, grade Canon log files for the poor, some of the projects we shoot, essentially the basics of color grading and how to create a certain look. So yeah, thank you for watching.